Well, hello everyone, wherever you might be watching or listening, and whatever state of spiritual reality you might be living right now, we welcome you. This is another edition of Prayer Nation. We are live on a Wednesday, and we are so excited to have you with us today. It is always our joy to welcome you, whether you're coming from our regional um, base here in the Houston area, Church Triumphant family, we love you, and it is always a joy. It is always uh, more energy, more excitement uh, when we have people that are in our context, that are doing life together, that are praying uh, in the same community. And there are many that join us now from beyond uh, the region that are stepping from the state of Texas or from the south of the United States. We welcome you from the east, from the west, from the north, and from the south. I've already seen Florida and Wisconsin and Arizona and others that are already coming in. And of course, our global community, we welcome you. For those of you that join us from Asia, Thank you so much. For those that join us from down under, uh, whether you're New Zealand or Australia or Fiji, um, we are welcoming you. The islands of the sea, the Pacific, we welcome you. Whether it's Central America, South America, or North America, we are so blessed to have you. Europe, the Middle East, Africa, we welcome you. We're so thankful to have a global prayer community in which we are joining together from around the world. Seeing New York coming in, so God bless you. Uh, Oklahoma, great to have you back with us again. So thank you to all of our Prayer Nation family. Uh, we are doing this together. We are in the same, uh, uh, shall we say, flow together. And so it is uh, something that is exciting every time uh, we get to connect. And of course, many, 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 many people watch uh, after the live broadcast is over. And we welcome you as well. We thank you. We know that everyone can stop your day or you're in a different time zone. And so you catch us when you can catch us. Uh, as I travel, it's always um, just so encouraging to hear from all of you when you say, man, we're watching. We don't get to watch when uh, everyone else is watching. We watch it later. But we are, we are encouraged. Some tell me that they watch early in the morning. Uh, I'll do a broadcast on a Wednesday. They'll watch Thursday morning. Or if it's Friday, they're watching Saturday. So it doesn't matter when you catch it. But we are so thankful uh, when you are there. But those of you, Oregon, I'm seeing Colorado now just joining in. Um, uh, it, 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 when we're live, there's something that it just it does create an energy and I hear this uh, from others. I feel the same way. It's just really great to know, man, uh, you know, Mississippi or Florida or what, we're all praying together and focusing on the same things. Lots of Wisconsin folks, God bless you. Uh, Arkansas again, joining in. We could just keep doing this for a long time, but thank you so much for joining us. So today, um, we have two main segments that we're going to do. Uh, the first segment is going to be praying like Jesus, and the second one is kind of a continuation, but it uh, it adds another layer, and that is uh, rescue missions. What does it mean uh, to do a spiritual rescue mission? God sends you uh, on a journey to pray for someone, and we're pulling them out of something. So Montenegro, God bless you. So glad these new uh, appointed missionaries going and opening up a new country. Uh, great to see the Browns joining us today. Friendswood, we're coming. We're coming to Friendswood. Church Triumphant family is coming to Friendswood. So glad you're praying with us today. So let's start first by just opening up our hearts and preparing ourselves to really pray effectively. You know, we are walking in the spirit every day, but we don't have the same flow every day. There are times when we feel very bold. There are times when we feel very free. There's other times when there are clouds that are over our heads and we're trying to navigate that and push through that. I was just at the Fivefold Ministry Conference in Kansas City, uh, was uh, preaching 
for a dear friend of mine in Donovan, Missouri before the conference. And then I stayed over and prayed for another uh, friend of mine um, who is uh, pushing, uh, pushing uh, an opening and uh, operating and functioning at a new level there. Their church is uh, in, in Kansas City, in the Liberty area of Kansas City. Uh, and was with two great, great churches in be, uh, on either side, bookends of this great fivefold ministry week. So I was not able to do a prayer nation last week. I was hoping that maybe somewhere in the afternoon, but I just was not able. There were other conversations and uh, different things that I needed to do. So we are here today, back after two weeks, and uh, we're uh, just kind of assessing uh, where we are in the spirit and what God uh, has done since we have been here on Prayer Nation. Uh, I did get a word from the Lord while I was there, and uh, we will use this as a teaching point as we kind of push off into prayer in just a moment. But Rima words help us to recenter. Rima words help us to understand, okay, the flow is there, and then the flow changes. How uh, many of you, uh, you, you've had times where, where, I mean, man, it was just so strong. Last Prayer Nation broadcast was so intense. I mean, I was beating on my desk and we were laying on the floor. There was prophecy. I mean, spiritual warfare, groanings, intense groanings. And the Lord said that there would be waves, waves of this travail, and it would be travail in order to prevail that we would travail until we prevailed. And then the second thing is he said it would be weeks, that there would be weeks of this. In other words, this is a season of birthing. This is a season of, of, of pushing things um, out, things that God has put in us, things that God has imparted to us, spiritual insights, and through our intimacy with God and through exposure to the next level, God first brought us into a larger space. He pushed us into a larger space. This was sort of external, bringing us into a new space. And then he reached internal and pulled something out of us. This is creation. This is creation. So he put man first in a wide open space of the garden. And then something was missing. And he pulled something out of him to create the woman. And so we have an external and internal uh, uh, movement and flowing. Uh, so this is, this is just a very simple and easy way. It's of and by, of and by. You're always going to see this, the of and the by. So as we get into our uh, teaching point in Philippians 1, you can get your Bibles ready to go there in Philippians 1. We'll touch this again. But I had a prophetic word to help me to understand all of these groanings that I've been in, these travails, I, I'm feeling more. It's almost every day I'll have another wave of it come over, and it may come again while we are praying today. But I wanted to, I wanted to tell you this prophetic word because uh, this is how it even it works with me. So all of us are seeking to discern, seeking to understand what is going on in our lives? First Corinthians two, for he that is spiritual judges all things; he himself is judged of no man. What does that mean? When you are spiritually attuned, you have a three hundred and sixty degree discernment, and you have a spirit, soul, and body understanding. So no one has to tell you or judge or discern where you are. You know it. All they're doing is confirming what you know. They're, they're coming alongside and confirming, but they don't have to discern. When you are not spiritually mature, you have to constantly have people come alongside to tell you where you are and what's going on. It's like someone that maybe has a damage to their eyes. I'm not saying that they're completely blind, but maybe like when I had surgery on my eyes, I had to be very careful for a while. Um, but even leading up to the surgery, I couldn't see as well. So there's certain things I can see fine. Other things I need someone to see for me. Tell me, what does this say? Uh, I, it's too small. I can't read this. Or now I just put out my, now I just put on my readers, okay? <laughs> if I can't see it very well. But you need a little help is my point. But when you're seeing perfectly, you're seeing clearly, you're actually helping others. 
Jesus said, take the plank out of your eye. You'll be able to see for others. But you won't have a condemning type of judgment. If you're judging out of condemnation, you got you don't even know how blind you are trying to help somebody else with the little moat that's in their eye. you got a plank in yours is what Jesus said. But then he said, if you continue on, take out the th plank in your eye, then you will be able to see. But because you had a plank in your eye, you're going to have humility and empathy. You're not going to come with a carnal judgment. You're going to have a spiritual judgment. But we still need each other. The whole point of the fivefold ministry is that no matter how strong I am or how many levels of ministry I have, I still need help. No one is supposed to do it alone. I had a pastor come and pray over me. And he said, I was praying and praying over each speaker before the conference. And uh, when I stopped at your name, he said the Holy Spirit wouldn't let me stop. He just kept praying. He said, kept telling me to keep praying for you. So as he was praying, he said he saw a very dark, ominous cloud that was over me. And then he said, suddenly there was a breakthrough. The sun began to shine. He said, then the cloud completely dissipated. And uh, there was nothing but beautiful blue sky and sunshine. And then he saw eight different trails, eight different trails, north, south, east, west, northeast, northwest, and then southwest and southeast. He said the roads were, weren't gold, but there was a gold coloring to the roads, meaning that's what was flowing on the roads was golden. And he said, I just was praying for this. And what a confirmation, because I have been in a very intense season of prayer. And it was like there was this great dark heaviness that was over. But now, boom, it was like something confirmed that, that you know, we're coming out of this and it's clear. And then the flow in every direction. Wow. What a blessing it is to have other men of God from the fivefold ministry, women of God from the fivefold ministry, and the saints of God to come along to a side or come together and bring confirmation and help to bring words to what I was feeling, help bring words to what I was feeling. So now we have an openness again. We have a clarity again. So now it's time to operate in the divine center, operate in the divine center. And that's what it shows. And when we're in that divine center, ministry happens in every direction. That's, that's what is being expressed. So we take those as launch points and we push off from them. So let's begin in prayer today, right now, and let's, let's get to that goal of clearing out those dark clouds around you so that we can all be under that open heaven in the divine center and ministry can flow in every direction. Okay, let's pray. Father, we thank you as we have just had an open today to our broadcast and getting so many online together. We thank you, Lord Jesus, for people in every quarter of the world that are connecting with us. We all want to be in that divine center. We all want to be in that perfect expression of your timing and will. We want to come to that resting point, Lord Jesus, where we are not worried about tomorrow and we are not troubled about yesterday. Where we are on that journey, where we are going where you want us to go, and we are released from where we have been, so we are content where we are. Father, we come to you today to be able to process through every emotion that all of these beautiful emotions that you gave to us will have uh, complete uh, submission or connection to you and to your Holy Spirit so that only those emotions that you desire us to have, we have. And everything that belongs to the flesh or to the carnal, everything that belongs to the world, anything that would be affected by our adversary or by what is beneath your will, those things we die to today. That we would have just the emotion of your perfect love in our lives. And we thank you, Father, right now, that we can come into the center of God consciousness. So we do this through praise and worship. We come before you wanting to be in your presence face to face. We're wanting connection. So right now, everyone, let's begin to just close our eyes. Unless you're driving, close your eyes. Or if you're walking, uh, you might need to stop and sit down somewhere. But we're going to close our eyes for a minute. And I want you just to focus on the presence of God. If you can allow your mind's eye to see the throne of God, 
if you can allow your spirit to give you imagery um, of what it would be like to stand right before Jesus Christ himself, how would you praise him? How would you talk to him? How would you thank him? What would you say to him? So let's begin to enter into that, into that time of thanksgiving and praise and worship. Father, we thank you right now. We thank you for what you have done. We thank you for the divine image. We thank you for the word made flesh. We thank you for coming and walking among us. We thank you, Jesus. Oh, Jesus, I love you. And no matter what my body is doing or how I feel physically, oh God, you are never, you are never different. You are the same, whether I feel tired in prayer or I feel energized in prayer, whether I am distracted or whether I am focused. God, your mercy is the same. Your grace is the same. You always give us what we need. You always help us with whatever circumstance we might be in. We give you praise today that whether we are weeping tears of sowing or whether we are having uh, times of rejoicing because of our reaping, God, whether we sow in tears, we know we will reap in joy. We thank you, Father that you have every cycle and every purpose in our lives that is working together for the good. It's working together for good. It's working together for good. We give our spirit and our soul and our body to you right now. We surrender. I want you to do this together. All right, prayer nation. We're surrendering our spirit, soul, and body to God. Father, you said that you want us to be preserved blameless unto the coming of the Lord, that our whole spirit and soul and body would be sanctified, would be made holy before you. We would be set, a, set aside that our spirit, oh God, is disconnected from every other spirit, that we would have just the influence of the Holy Spirit in our lives that we would be joined unto the Lord. You said, he that, he that is joined unto the Lord is one spirit. I want to be joined unto you. I want to be, oh God, in oneness with you. So we worship you by surrendering, oh God, the space that is within our spirit, that we would be the habitation of God. Hallelujah. Now lift your hands and thank the Lord right now that you are the habitation. I want you to confess it. Say, I am the habitation. Say, the Holy Spirit dwells within me. Say, I yield myself completely. I surrender my spirit completely. That my spirit would be one with his spirit right now in Jesus' name. Make us whole, Lord. You said, though the outward man perish, the inward man is renewed day by day. Now let us be renewed in Jesus' name. Clap your hands and let's thank the Lord. There is something that is flowing right now already. There is a river that's already flowing right now. If you have the Holy Spirit, just let the Holy Spirit begin to pray through you right now in Jesus' name. That's right. Just pray in the Holy Ghost right now. Just let it flow right now, just for a few moments. Thank you, Jesus. We worship you, Lord. You are worthy, O oh God. There is none like you. There is none beside you. You have no equal, Jesus. We push through the darkness. We push through, O oh God. All of the other distractions, Lord. Ah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Now we go into the soulless realm. We go into the soulless realm. So we are renewing our minds. We are surrendering our emotions, which we've already prayed a little bit about that, and our will. But as we do, if there's some part of you that feels restrained, if there's some aspect as I am praying and as we're praying together that you notice feels a little bit off, just write a note. Just write a word a person, someone may come to your mind while we are praying about emotions, or there might be a decision, something that has been pressing in on you. I want you to give that to God. Uh, this is in your will. Uh, there might be something in your thoughts. There might be a constant battle in your mind. So we're giving these things to the Lord that we can be renewed. 
Father, we want the Spirit, the Holy Spirit, to be in charge of all of us. We don't want it just to be part. We know, Lord Jesus, that Satan filled the heart of Ananias, even though he was an early church Christian, had been exposed to the ministry of Jesus and the apostles, had been filled with the Holy Spirit, had been baptized in Jesus' name, and yet there was a part of his heart that had darkness so that Satan could operate there. Lord, we do not want, we do not want to be partially yours. We want to be wholly, completely yours. So we pray, God, that you would work in the secret parts of our heart, that you would work, oh God, in the secret part of my being, <laughs> that you would go behind the closed doors of my emotion, of my seat of consciousness, that you would go into my heart, oh God, the seat of control where myself is, where my awareness is, my conscious, subconscious, and unconscious is, the things that shape who I am and what I think about myself. As a man thinks in his heart, so is he. I want you to go into the deep regions of those things that I don't even know that are working on me that are there. And I give you permission to shine your light for your word says the spirit of, of a man is the candle of the Lord that, that, that uh, searches the innermost parts of, of his belly or the innermost parts of his being. And it goes into the secret, secret recesses of the heart. Oh Lord, create in me a clean heart, oh God, and renew within me a right spirit. God, we surrender all rebellion. We surrender all, all uh, stubbornness. Every part of us that is resistant, every part of us, oh God, that will not surrender, God, we give it to you today. I deny myself. I pick up my cross. So I want you to say it with me. Say it with me. Today, we again pick up our cross to follow Jesus right now. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Ah, we want that dying. We feel that dying. We feel that wave of travail that is pushing through all of these layers, all of these things that have been hidden from us, that not been hidden from God. God sees everything be, be, before him. Everything is naked. Everything is open. Uh, Hebrews 4.13 says, it's all naked and open before him with whom we have to do. You see more, not less. But because you see more, you choose to see less. You love us, Lord, like nobody else loves us. Thank you for loving me. Now turn your hands toward yourself and just say, I receive. I receive your forgiveness, Lord. As I forgive, I receive your love right now, Father. I thank you that you love me. I don't know why you love me the way you do, but I thank you that you love me. There is therefore now no condemnation. I'm breaking the spirit of shame off of you. I'm breaking the spirit of embarrassment off of you. I am breaking fear off of you right now. In the name of Jesus, every voice of accusation, I am reversing right now in the name of Jesus. We are pushing through every religious spirit that tries to hijack the principles of God's word and try to blind from revelation or to resist spiritual authority or to undermine the, the operation and ministration of the will of God through the body of Christ. We take authority over this pseudo Christ, antichrist spirit in the name of Jesus. We give you every desire. We give you every intent. We give you every motive. We surrender our will to you, Father. We pray for every emotion to be yours. And we pray in Jesus' name that we would be renewed in the spirit of our mind after the image of him that created us. God, I pray that you would take the limitations off of my mind. Take the limitations off of my spirit. Help us, oh God, to flow and operate in the Holy Ghost. There will be some dimensions that you will not get to until you say yes to God. There will be some things that you will not be able to accomplish until you submit to everything. There are certain areas that are, that are easier or that these are battles that we've already won or, uh, or victories that have already, already been fought for us. There, they are, there's testimonies that we share. But then there are other parts that are still in the battle, still parts of us that are still in the war, that are still fighting against our soul. So abstain from fleshly lusts, war against the stone. We are, uh, we are cutting off 
these fleshly things. So this is why we surrender our bodies to God. We come to you today, Father, and we present our body as a living sacrifice. That, Lord Jesus, that you will work in our bodies today. In Jesus' name, that you will flow in our bodies today. In Jesus' name name. Hallelujah. All right. Clap your hands to the Lord and give him praise right now that our eyes would see, our ears would hear, our tongue would taste, that our nose would smell, that we would feel after God and find him that through every sense, the fivefold ministry can work in the body, the five senses of the body of Christ, fivefold ministry, the five senses of the believer. These are different aspects of how God uses are we, we, the soul uses the body and these uh, senses are here to give inputs from the external. In the same way, our soul uses our spirit man to get, impur, it, to get inputs from the internal spiritual world. The kingdom of heaven is not here or there, but behold, the kingdom of God is within you. It's in the spiritual aspect. It is no less real. It is actually more real because everything invisible is being manifested or being known by what is visible. So invisible and visible um, uh, work together. But what is visible came out of what is invisible. Therefore, what is invisible or spiritual is a higher law than natural law. And this is how faith brings the promise and makes it provision. And we call it a miracle. We call it an answered prayer. It's God working or manifesting in the physical material world to show his preeminence. Praise God. Do you feel the presence of the Lord? Can you feel the anointing of God flowing in your lives? All right, clap your hands to the Lord. Just give him praise together. Now, I'm going to um, I want to bring something to you, a thought to you today, and it has two parts to it. Um, we're going to be in Philippians 1 and in Romans 8. And I'm going to show you yet another component of Romans 8. But first, I want to give you uh, the, the foundation of it. Philippians 1, he talks about verse 4, always in every prayer of mine for you all, making request with joy. So isn't it wonderful that Paul could say that every time I pray, no matter which kind of prayer I use, I'm always doing it with joy. There was something, he said, from you, for your fellowship in the gospel from the first day until now. He said, look, from the very first day that, that we experienced the gospel being heard and obeyed until now, every time I pray, I have joy. God took out of his suffering. He was beaten, put into the stocks, and, and, and but Paul and Silas at midnight in Philippi were rejoicing and out of that spirit of rejoicing, a church was born. The jailer springs in. He's about to kill himself. No, everyone is still here. Nobody ran away. The chains were all broken off of them, but no one ran away. And that in itself was a miracle. It saved the jailer's life. And uh, Paul and Silas did not run away. And because they did not run away, they uh, restrained the rest of the prisoners and it was the beginning of a church that was being started. So there was prison uh, to freedom. There was suffering that led to joy. And through this, now, every time he prays, he is constantly focusing on the joy. We see Jesus on the cross. The Bible says, for the joy that was set before him, he endured the cross, despising the shame. For the joy. So this is something that we learn is that it didn't mean that all of his circumstances were exceptional, but it, it meant that the fruit of joy was overarching or, or triumphing uh, in every circumstance, no matter what kind of prayer he's having, whether it's prayer with tears or intercession, uh, or whether it is travail or spiritual warfare, or whether he is in meditation or thoughtfulness and just listening to God for direction, it always came back to joy. The joy of the Lord is our strength. And as we navigate all of the changes going on in our world, and as we push through all of the tribulation, 
uh, as we overcome every affliction, as we deal with every obstacle, as we go into spiritual warfare, it all has to default back to joy. So can we stop for a second right now and thank the Lord for this fruit of the Spirit that God wants us to operate with the, with the joy of the Lord. This is that source of renewal. Rejoice in the Lord always. And again, I say rejoice. Father, we want to have a default setting that we always come back because of your love, because of your grace, because of your goodness, because of our abundant awareness of who you are in your presence is fullness of joy. Let joy just abound within us for the joy of the Lord is our strength. Now, this joy brings a confidence, being confident of this very thing, that he which began a good work in you will perform it until the day of Jesus Christ. So he is saying, I know you're not where you wanna be, but you're not where you started. He began this good work, he's gonna finish. Aren't you thankful that God doesn't leave anything undone? He's going to help us finish. How many of you have things that God is working in right now, but it's not complete yet? Here is our confidence. As you default into joy, always have that joy bring you into that confidence. Being confident. He's going, this very thing, I know this very, very well. I am completely persuaded that he will perform it. So he is saying, I have you in my heart. He's talking about how endeared he is in as much as both in my bonds and in the defense and confirmation of the gospel, you all are partakers of my grace. He's saying, wait, I'm writing to, the, to you from jail. I started in a prison and you're, you're my church in Philippi that, that was birthed through my ministry and we have the fellowship of the gospel and I still have joy thinking about you. I started in jail there, but guess what? I'm back in jail again. And I still got joy because I know that what came out of jail then was joy. And what will come out of jail this time will also be joy. And he says, but I'm longing after you. I, I love you. I miss our physical connection. God is my record. How greatly I long after you in the bowels of Jesus Christ. Notice here, it is the day of Jesus Christ. Now it's the bowels of Jesus Christ. So he is really crystal centric in his writings. There is very much a, a, a Christ centered focus and lens and quite a strong awareness of who Jesus is. This is very important. And this I pray. Now he's, he's writing this uh, with joy. He's writing this with awareness and he's writing this in prayer. So prayer nation, we're feeling the results of Paul's prayer in prison, despite his a tribulation, we see him triumphing over all of his surroundings and he is praying effectively and filled with love. And this, I pray that your love may abound yet more and more. So he's got that abounding love in his heart and he's praying that abounding love that he is feeling in that moment of prayer would be communicated through his letter that it would be extended. So what happens when we get into these dimensions of prayer and the consciousness and awareness of Christ and we feel how much love that he has and that love is in us. He said the bowels of Christ. In other words, the love that he has is not just his own love. He is saying my capacity is that I am loving like Jesus as I love you. And so I'm praying this now that your love will abound more and more in knowledge experiential knowledge. And then he says also in judgment that you will be able to discern through this love that you may approve all things that are excellent. That in other words, through this healthy, abundant, mature flow of God's perfect love, you will only receive the things that are excellent. You will approve those things that are excellent, that you may be sincere and without offense so that there's no offenses that will get in and, and, and close down. The moment that there's an offense, your spirit closes. I want your spirit open. I want you loving with sincerity. That means there's no hypocrisy. Nothing fake about your love. I want you to be pure and open and flowing. Being filled with the fruits of righteousness. There's that abundance again. Filled. Which are, there it is again, by Jesus Christ. 
So he's saying your source of all this, it's going to come by Jesus Christ. Notice how many times he is saying Jesus Christ. Unto the glory and praise of God. So now he says, but I, I would you would understand, brethren, that the things that happened to me have fallen out rather into the furtherness of the gospel. Things happened to him. Trouble happened to him. He is saying, hey, hey, no, no, no. Everything that happens to me helps the gospel. Because I'm held by the love of God, because I'm in the will of God, because I'm sent as his emissary or apostolos, pos, apostle, establishing his kingdom and speaking in his authority and his name. He is saying it all just makes the gospel, no matter what happens, it makes it, it makes it advance, the further furtherance of the gospel. He said, so my bonds in Christ, him being in jail is synonymous with him preaching the gospel. Wow. So he's not complaining, oh God, why did you let this happen to me? I'm in jail because I've been preaching. Oh, I thought you sent me. He's like, no, he's in this great, God's using my jail sentence to give me access to the palace. It's manifest in all the palace and in other places. He's got a case coming up. How are we going to solve this? Well, I'm going to need the king. I'm going to need uh, the governor. I'm going to need these high-ranking magistrates to be able to, to decide. That's what happened in Philippi. Now it's happening again in Rome. So indeed, preach Christ even. He said, so he's talking about it's making other people be confident because of his prison sentence to speak the word of God without fear. If Paul is this bold in jail, then we don't need to be afraid of being thrown in jail. He says, so people are preaching. Some of envy, strife, some are, some are of goodwill. Not everybody's motive is the same. One preached Christ of contention, not sincerely, and, and they're supposing to add affliction to my bonds. Some people are a angry at Paul or jealous of Paul, but others of love, knowing that I am sent for the defense of the gospel. Others, they're stepping in and preaching out of the right motive. He says, but I'm not, I'm not worried. It, notwithstanding every way, whether in pretense or in truth, Christ is preached and I therein do rejoice. There he goes back to it again. Yea, and will rejoice. He said, I'm happy. No one's taking my joy. No matter what other people do, no one's taking my joy. Now, here's the point that I want to get to. All of this is to get into a flow. Every bit of this is a flow. For I know that this shall turn to my salvation. How? Through your prayer and the supply of the Spirit of Jesus Christ. This is very specific here. I want you to notice it. He is saying, I've been praying, I've been praying, I've been praying, I've got joy. And he says, but I know my circumstance is going to change. It's going to get better for two reasons. Because I trust your prayers for me. That's number one. Number two, there is an abundant supply that comes through the spirit of Jesus Christ. So this is what I want to say to you today. He started talking about his prayers and all the different kinds of prayers that he was praying and how it constantly ends back with joy. And he has confidence that God is working things out with them. Giving a little clarification about these other people preaching. What are they doing and what's their motives? And doesn't that bother you? And shouldn't that, does, doesn't that hurt our cause? He says, no, because Christ is still being preached. But he says, but listen, I know you are praying for me and I believe in your prayers for me. And I know because we are connected, something happens through this relationship that gives us access to the supply of the spirit. Our agreement, our oneness gives us access to the supply that comes through the spirit of Jesus Christ. Now, he gives us a tremendous insight here as to what the Holy Spirit actually is. The Holy Spirit is the Spirit of Jesus Christ. Hmm. I want you to get that. So I'm going to ask some questions here, and then we're going to get into this from a, from a deeper perspective of what the Holy Ghost actually is and how it works. Paul, being very Christocentric, especially here in Philippians 1, 
uh, is leading us to this word supply. And I want us to, to focus on this for a minute. But supply here um, is, a, is a word of, of great abundance. It would be, um, according to a Greek scholar, it would be like someone, um, and they use the example in the, in the story to illustrate the word. The Greek scholar used this example of uh, in, in ancient uh, or in biblical times, uh, there was a traveling group of singers in Greek uh, culture that wanted to, or Greek society that wanted to travel and sing, but they needed people to uh, be the benefactors or they needed people to be the investors um, in what they were doing. It would be very similar to having a nonprofit today that's going to support the arts. Uh, and it would be like someone coming along and saying, I'm going to supply for everything that you need for this trip. And I'm going to have um, even, in other words, the gift would be so great, the word supply there, that it would not only support that trip, but any other trip that they would do. It would be like an endowment from the Bill Gates, you know, the, one of the wealthiest men in the world, would just say, we're going to give your nonprofit a billion dollars. Well, you didn't need that much. You only needed for your job 300 million or 100 million or whatever for this great... It would be like, you, so what he's saying in Greek, that word supply there is so large. It is so massive that it's not just for what you need right now. It's for whatever you might need, whenever you might need it, for as long as you need it, as long as there is a purpose or assignment attached to it. The supply, that's what we are talking about. I might be in prison, he said, but I've got all this joy. I am confident. He said, the gospel's being preached. People are being made bold. You're doing great and your prayers are availing. He said, I want you to know that we are accessing through our prayers. I am convinced. He said, I know this. This is not I'm hoping or I believe. It's not any other language. It is certainty. I know this will turn to my salvation. It is all going to turn for good. It is all going to be in the right way because of our prayers. The prayers are availing. They are they are energized. Now watch this. According to my earnest expectation, verse 20. So you're, you're praying. The supply of the Spirit, according to my earnest expectation. He said, I have an expectation. I have an anticipation. I know when I'm praying, I'm already in going into that supply. I know when you're praying, we're already touching that supply of Jesus Christ. Of Jesus Christ. Earnest expectation. The word expectation there is anxious or persistent. In other words, it, 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 I mean, I, I'm ready for it right now. I was ready yesterday. I mean, man, but so I am persisting because I know it's there. I know God's going to do this. I know God's going to change it. I mean, man, I'm just like, whoo, it's coming. How many of you are sensing that or feeling that, that earnest expectation? And then he says, and the second thing, and my hope, my hope. And this is, again, another word. It's just an, an, another magnifier, an expectation of good, of an expectation of hope. And this is always looking forward. Hope is always forward. That in nothing, he said, I shall be ashamed. He said, nothing that I do, I will not be ashamed of it. God, God is working, and I'm not going to look back on this time and say, I missed it. Something fell off. Something how many times, how many times have we done that? Man, I'm really good at this part, but man, I just messed up on that. Man, I was so, I felt like, man, I was operating really great. Or maybe you were teaching or maybe you were doing a Bible study or maybe you, when you were praying for someone for the Holy Ghost, it was good. But then somebody came up for healing and you didn't know what to do. And he says, no, 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 no. I, and nothing I shall be ashamed. God's supply is so abundant. I am so aware of it. I know your prayers are already working. I have anticipation. I have anticipation that with all boldness, all boldness, in other words, absolutely no restraint, no limitations, not just boldness, it's all boldness. I mean, that I have, the, I have, that I have nothing in my mind at all that is a distraction. There is, there is not the least bit of hesitation, but that with all boldness, as always, so now, as always, he's saying, this is consistent. This is not a one-time thing. 
So now, also Christ, there he goes again, Christ shall be magnified in my body. Wow. Christ will be magnified in my body. Megaluno. Mega is, is what you would expect. It is massive, huge, mega. It, to put it together, when you put these words together, megaluno, it means to declare or make great, to increase, extol, enlarge, show great, to deem, to esteem highly, to celebrate. So he is saying, in my body, it's going to manifest out of me. Whether it be by life or by death, either way. If I die, God is going to get some glory. My death will inspire people because I was faithful. For to me, to live is Christ and to die is gain. Wow. He said, matter of fact, I'm so close to heaven right now. I I'm trying to debate whether I should stay here or go on. <laughs> wow. I mean, it is intense what he is saying here. It is absolutely overflowing and it's awesome. He said, it's going to magnify my body. If I live, it's going to magnify. What he is saying is either way, either way, it is so powerful. It is so strong. It is so abundant. Either way, I win. So right now I'm releasing this into the body of Christ. I'm releasing this. We must come to a place of such certainty, such clarity, such boldness, such awareness that whether we are restrained physically, uh, whether we are in affliction, or the things he said happened to me, he said they're trying to add affliction to my bonds. There's even people out there with poor motives or wrong motives. Uh, there's jealousy, there's anger, there's envy, there's all these other things. He said, none of it's bothering me. I'm full of joy. I'm, re I'm celebrating because I am here for the gospel. It's not about me. It's about the gospel. And we have through the spirit of Jesus Christ and all supply. Can we thank the Lord for that right now? Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Woo, hallelujah. Now, here's my question. Let's go to Romans 8 and we'll close this out. You know, our time just goes by so fast. Thank you all so much for just, uh, just staying in the flow with me. Now watch this in Romans 8. I love Romans 8. There's so many things here in Romans 8. Uh, verse number 16, the spirit itself beareth witness with our spirit. So capital S with small s. We are the children of God. If children, then heirs, heirs of God and joint heirs with who? With who? With, with Christ. So if you... So if so be that ye suffer with him, ye may also be glorified together. For I reckon that the sufferings of this present time are not worthy to be compared with the glory which shall be revealed. Where? In us. Now let's keep going. Uh, verse number 26. Likewise, the Spirit also helpeth our infirmities. For we know not what we should pray for as we ought. But the Spirit itself maketh intercession for us with groanings which cannot be uttered. I was praying in the Holy Ghost at a conference um, about a year and a half ago, I believe. And as I was speaking in tongues with all of these awesome, wonderful, spirit-filled people, um, here all these apostolic people, Jesus' name people, and just the joy of all being together in this massive you know, arena. And I just started praying in the Holy Ghost. I'm not having to carry everything. There's so many strong men and women of God all around me that suddenly now I am in a place of meditation and revelation as I am interceding and praying. And suddenly I ask the question, if the spirit is praying through me, what is that? What is that? If the spirit is praying through me, there's one spirit in the body. We know that God is a spirit. He's not spirits. He is a spirit. There's one Lord, one faith, and one baptism, one God and Father of all is above all, through all, and in you all. <laughs> so, so we know God doesn't pray to God. So there's no co-equal, co-eternal, co-existent. We know that. We know that. Uh, Jesus, in praying to the Father, um, is not a co-equal, Son of God or God the Son. 
He is not God the Son. He is the Son of God. Different. So as the Son of God, he is acknowledging, he says, my Father is greater than I. Who is saying that? The man Christ Jesus is saying that. So when he is praying, he is praying as the man. He is praying as the Son. He is manifesting to us the Father, but he is praying as the Son. When you've seen me, you have seen the Father. How sayest thou then, show us the Father, and it suffices us? If you've seen me, you've seen the Father. We know from, from Romans 1, he is the express image of his person. We know from Colossians 1, he is the image of the invisible God. We know from Colossians um, two, that all the fullness of the Godhead dwelleth in him bodily and we're complete in him. So all the fullness of the Godhead is in him. He is divine. Thomas got down and said, my Lord and my God. And he didn't tell him not to, but yet Jesus prays. I return to my God and your God, to my father and your father. Uh, what, what is this language? So Jesus could be God and the son of God at the same time. This is the mystery of Christ. Okay. So the Holy Spirit, are there two spirits? This is what we say all the time. Are there two are there two spirits? One God. Isaiah said it very plainly. I am I am God alone. There there's none beside me. I I don't know any. The Jews were to were, were to say it. The Hebrews were to say it. You know, Shema Israel they will say it in modern times, Adonai. It could also be, it's actually the Tetragrammaton here. It could be Hashem, uh, if you don't want to say the ineffable name. Or you would say Yahovah, or some say Yahweh, or Yavah. Whatever the vowel point that you want to put in there. But here, O Israel, Yahovah is, is our God. Yahovah is Ichad. He is one. They were monotheistic, no question. They were no, no question they were monotheistic. We see that. So now, here we are in the New Testament. What do we do with this? One spirit. So if the spirit is praying through me to God, what is that? Does God pray to God? Does God pray to God? No. So then who is praying when the spirit is making intercession for us? We don't know what to pray, he says, so just let the Spirit pray. So I'm praying in the Spirit, and I ask the question, God, Holy Spirit doesn't pray to Holy Spirit. Holy Spirit doesn't pray to God. Then what is this? What God? In other words, God doesn't pray to God, but the Holy Spirit is praying in me. What is the Holy Spirit then? And then the revelation flo flowed. Philippians tells us, it's the Spirit of Jesus Christ. So let's go a little further. When I was reading the oneness of God many years ago, the, the question was asked, the man, the man Jesus, when he resurrected, what happened to his spirit? If he was 100% man and 100% God, then that means he would have a spirit, a soul, and a body. So what would happen to his spirit then? If he is, if he is you know, dead and then his spirit, Life left him, and then he's a quickening spirit, the Bible says. First man, Adam, is a living soul, 1 Corinthians 15. Second man, Adam, is a quickening spirit, life-giving spirit. Adam could not raise himself. Jesus had the power. He said, I lay down my body, I can take it up again. Wow. He's a quickening spirit, life-giving spirit. So, you know, in the book, it just simply said it was absorbed into the Father. And I agree with that, but I didn't understand what that meant. John 14, 23. Let's read it. I'll read it to you just so we can make sure I'll quote it. But I want to read it to you. This was one of the hardest verses for me to understand. Jesus answered and said unto him, if a man love me, he will keep my words and my father will love him and we will come unto him and make our abode with him. Wait a minute. 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 He's obviously not talking about physical abode because 
Jesus physically as son is not going to make his abode with us. My father will love him and we will come unto him and make our abode with him. How? I thought, I thought we were talking about father and son as spirit and body. Father being spirit, son being the uh, physical manifestation of God in the flesh. The word became flesh. How can the word become flesh dwell with me? Man, I had the hardest time. I went to my dad. Dad, what does this verse mean? I thought we believed in one. It looks like there's we here. How do we get one out of we? And he goes, ha, 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 ha. you don't understand that? And he walks out of the room. And I'm like, no, no, I don't. And I go back to my room. I'm like, God, I'm so sorry. I'm so stupid. I don't understand what this means. Apparently it's really obvious. And, and, uh, and then I realized this was for me to get by revelation that there were some things that I needed revelation knowledge of. And so it took me a long time before I came to this. I understand first and foremost, this is talking about the new birth. We put on Christ in baptism. And then we receive the Father. Um, we receive life of the Father through the Holy Spirit. So that's it's born of the water and born of the Spirit. So that's the simplest definition. But there's something else here. There's something else here. There is something different between the Holy Spirit of the Old Testament and what we get. There's something that we get because of who Jesus is and because of his death, burial, and resurrection that, that the, the, the people before us did not get. The prophets said not unto themselves, but unto us they did minister the things which are now reported unto you with the Holy Ghost sent down from heaven, which things the angels desire to look into. God took from the spirit of the man, Christ Jesus, and then wrapped that in his spirit and put those two together. And that is the Holy Spirit. So we have a little piece of the divine and we have a little piece of the glorified Christ. That's why Jesus, after his resurrection, breathed onto them and said, receive the Holy Spirit. It's me. You're getting me. So when you pray in the Holy Ghost, you are praying like Jesus. It is, it is a lack. I don't know what to pray. So then Jesus, how Jesus would pray, the Holy Spirit brings that into your mind, brings that into your spirit. It accesses how Jesus operated in the flesh as a man, how he overcame every temptation, how he always did the right thing, always knew what he needed to know, always prayed the right prayer, always ministered the right grace, raised the dead, cast out the devils, confronted the Pharisees and the Sadducees and religious leaders, was able to talk to kings, uh, to stand in the presence of Pilate, was able to endure afflictions and walk the, the, the road to Calvary, how he was able to give his life and say, not my will, but your will be done, to intercede with great drops of blood. Everything that Jesus did in the flesh is in his human spirit. His human spirit uh, was the catalog of all that the Holy Spirit did. The Bible says it, he had the spirit without measure. So when we get the spirit of God, we get Christ and just just as we are, just as Christ is accepted as the perfect man, he imputes righteousness to us that we become perfect through the blood of Jesus. That when God looks at us, it's as, as, as if he is looking at his perfect son, Jesus Christ. Therefore, we have access to the same relationship that he had with the father, the same access with the father and the same resources that Jesus had. So we are praying in oneness with Jesus and we are one with God through Christ. And that's what Jesus was praying in John 17. And that's what he lives out through us, through the Holy Ghost. I don't know what to pray, but Jesus, if he was here, he would know what to pray. I don't know what to do, but if Jesus were here, he would know what to do. That's why the Bible says they took knowledge of them that they had been with Jesus. 
Paul says it is the Spirit, capital S, of Jesus Christ. It is the combination of what he did as a man, now glorified. He is the first fruits, and we are now the continuation. We are heirs and joint heirs together with Christ. In other words, whatever Jesus had access to as an heir, as the Son, the only begotten of the Father, we have that now. So folks, when you pray in the Holy Ghost, you are learning to pray like Jesus. Whew. Wow. <laughs> and if you will allow the Holy Spirit to give you direction, you will get more and more crystal centric. This is why Paul is always talking about Christ in you, the hope of glory. This is what it is. It's literally the spirit that operated and functioned in Jesus. So it's in the same way that he took the spirit of Moses and laid it on the 70 and they prophesied. The same way that Elisha got a little bit of Elijah's spirit and it was a double portion. The human spirit is the place where we catalog all spiritual experiences. And now think of this through the lens of who Jesus is. Wow. And now that's what we get access to through the Holy Ghost that we will pray like Jesus prays. Or would you lift your hands to the Lord right now? And would you thank him for this? Father, we just thank you for the flow of the Holy Ghost. We thank you, Jesus, that you are in us. We thank you, Lord, that you are operating and functioning in us to give us access to the Father, to give us access to the throne, that we will not be completely consumed by the divine presence because you are in us and you made it palpable. You make it possible you bring us into that relationship in Jesus' name, in Jesus' name. So your homework is to read John 17 again today. Now, here's the second component of this. As we go to back to Romans 8, I want you to see a word here. And again, the Greek scholar that I have been uh, uh, reading, uh, it gives us this tremendous insight here to this word intercession. Likewise, the spirit also helpeth our infirmities, for we know not what we should pray for as we ought, but the spirit itself maketh intercession for us with groanings, which cannot be uttered or cannot be understood. The word intercession here and its expanded understanding means to go on a rescue mission. The word to intercede, intercede here would mean to, to go into a combative area. Go into a place where there is loss. Going into a place where, where there is great need. Going into a place where people are in jeopardy. Uh, where they cannot help themselves. And that word intercession is to rescue them to rescue them out. Now this is twofold. The first, the first sight here is that he is helping our infirmities. He's helping our infirmities. We know not what we should pray for. I'm, I have infirmities. So let's look at that word infirmity. What does that mean? So if I have an, if I have an infirmity, then this is something that is a, it, it means to take hold of the opposite. Uh, an infirmity would be to be pulling in the opposite direction. Something, an infirmity is, is, a, is a weakness, is a weakness. So likewise, the spirit also helpeth our infirmities. Something's, uh, oh God, I got this thing, it's, it's draining me, okay. I, I'm, I'm in jeopardy right now. So the first meaning is the Holy Spirit rescues us. <laughs> it rescues us through us. I don't know how to get out. I don't know what to do. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. And the Holy Spirit starts going, I'm going to... In the, in the Spirit, it's, it, it, there, there's war. In the Spirit, there's, there's words. In the Spirit, it's get out, leave him alone, back off. Release him in the spirit. There's there, there's there's inter, uh, 
groanings. Ugh, what is this? God is taking those infirmities. And he's saying, he said, I'm on a rescue mission. I'm going to pull you out of this. I'm going to pull you out of this lack, pull you out of this hole, pull you out of the jeopardy that you were in. You've been captured. You have been, you have been defeated or a part of you has, uh, you know, has, has been broken down or wounded right? Spiritual warfare would be one aspect, but it would be like, I'm sending you in, in the aftermath of something. Maybe it's after a hurricane or like the big tornado that hit Mississippi or, uh, you know, all the devastation, our infirmity. I just, I don't even know what to do. I, I'm, I'm gone. I, 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 if somebody doesn't help, there's not going to be any help for me. I, I'm, I'm starving over here. I'm dying over here. And the Holy Spirit comes and, and it, 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 does a rescue mission for us, through us. Isn't that amazing? It's the supply of Jesus Christ. It's the supply of the spirit of Jesus Christ. If Jesus was here, what would he do? Oh, he'd do this, 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 this. Oh yeah, well, well, they're hungry. Well, he would just take five loaves and two fish and boom, there you go. And 12 baskets later, here we are. So it helps us. So it goes on a rescue mission. But I believe also, that this means a secondary thing. The secondary thing is that it helps our infirmities. And after it's done helping us, we get into that intercession and we go on rescue missions with the Holy Spirit for others. It makes intercession for us with groanings which cannot be uttered. He that searches the hearts knoweth what is the mind of the Spirit because he maketh intercession intercession for the saints according to the will of God. Huh. He searches the hearts. He searches my heart or somebody else's heart. And he knows what is the mind. He searches the, the hearts, knoweth what is the mind of the spirit. And he that searches the hearts knoweth the mind of the spirit. Wow. Wow, the will of God and the mind of the spirit. And there's a he there. So that would be the spirit of Christ. That is that connection. That is that Christ element that helps us to flow with the divine element. So it's father and son. It's the spirit of the son and which is now glorified, which has become one with the father. But those components are there. They're still there working together in us. Is that amazing? Is that amazing? as if it were Jesus. So now he has multiplied himself and we're praying like Jesus. Now what happens to us as we mature and as we travail, what happens is it's no longer in tongues. Now we get the discernment ourselves. We get the revelation ourselves. So the spirit teaches us as it's praying. The anointing teaches us as it's praying. And we get revelation knowledge and it's not just speaking mysteries now. We're speaking understanding. We know that all things work together for good to them that love God. So this is all coming out of that spirit and that groaning. So let's go one more spot. And I know we're already in bonus time. But let me just give you one more spot here. In 1 Corinthians 14. He that speaketh in an unknown tongue edifieth himself. So you're building your building up, but he, he that prophesieth edifieth the church. In other words, if they can't understand what you're saying, it doesn't really help that much, but it's really helping you. You're building up yourself when you're praying in unknown tongue. I mean, it's, it's, it, 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 it means it can mean either to build the house or build the foundation, whichever you need. That's what it means. Edify. But I would that you all spoke with tongues. I would that you all spoke with tongues, but rather that you prophesied. I want everyone speaking in tongues, but really we want there to be some words now. So out of the tongues, he says, I want there to be utterances. And those utterances start bringing together what God is actually doing and giving us comprehension of it. So he goes a little further, uh, deeper into this. Now watch this. Verse number 13, wherefore, let him that speaketh in an unknown tongue pray that he may interpret. For if I pray in an unknown tongue, my spirit prayeth. So my spirit is bearing, one, bearing witness with his spirit that we are the sons of God. So his spirit and my spirit get joined. We get joined with Christ. We get joined. My spirit and his spirit get joined. 
It's one spirit, but now it's combined. It's combined in him. And I'm praying now. What is that? That is the, the part, the part of the son of God or the spirit of Jesus in us as if he were operating in his earthly role. He ever liveth to make intercession. What does that mean? The son of God is still functioning or operating in his sonship role. Now he does it through the Holy Ghost and he does it through his church and he does it through us. So he is saying, pray that you can interpret because your spirit is praying, but your understanding is unfruitful. What is it then? I will pray with the spirit and I will pray with the understanding also. I will sing with the spirit and I will sing with the understanding also. He is saying, folks, there is a point in this where you get past just praying it and not understanding, where you're now speaking in tongues and you begin to understand. And now you're praying like Jesus in both your conscious mind and your spirit, man. Wow. And we go on these rescue missions where God teaches us. Acts 1 and 1, all that Jesus began both to do and teach. We are carrying on. He began it. We are finishing the ministry of Jesus. Praise God. All right, let's pray to close this out today. Father, we thank you, Lord, for this session. We thank you, Lord Jesus, for this revelation knowledge, this understanding. And we know that there's more perfecting of all of it. But we are on to something. We are on to something, God. There's something that you have shown us, Lord, in the Spirit. And I pray that you would help me to operate the same as you. Jesus, I want to continue your ministry. I want you to be in me. I want you to be through me. I want you to be above me. I want you to be everywhere. I want people to take knowledge that I've been with Jesus. I want you to manifest who you are in me. I want you to be magnified in my body. Help us to walk through that doorway which you have created that we can say, Our Father which art in heaven, hallowed be your name. Let thy kingdom come. God, I want to pray. I want to pray the prayers that you need prayed. I want to pray in the spirit because you search the hearts and you know, you know what is needed. And I want to flow in that. I want to be one with you, Jesus. I want to be one with you. As he is, so are we in this world. That's what your word says. As he is. As you are right now, so are we. Let us operate in that full consciousness and awareness of your will in heaven. Let it be your will on earth. Whew, thank you, Jesus. Mm. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Mm. Well, I hope I've helped you a little bit today. God bless you. Thank you for just staying with me a little bit extra long today. We didn't have a broadcast last week, so we had a little bit of bonus time today. God is with us. He's for us, and he's flowing every day through his body, through his people. Let it continue through you, and let the Holy Spirit guide you like never before, knowing that it's unlocking more and more levels of Jesus, of who he is, and how he operates. And that word... Made flesh came so that we as flesh could become word. He came to be like us so we could be like him. God bless you. We love you. Don't stand in the shadows, but stand in the light. Because with Jesus, it is always high noon.